Hello and welcome to another Science Tutor video. I'm your tutor Nathan. In a previous video we discussed displacement versus time graphs. And in this video we're going to discuss velocity versus time graphs. So today's video, velocity versus time graphs. Velocity time graphs are another type of graph of motion. They display how the motion of an object, in this case the velocity of the object, varies as time varies. So your velocity versus time graph has two axes. Your y-axis has velocity on it, units of meters per second. And your x-axis has time with units of seconds. The line that is drawn between these two axes, depending on the information or data that you're given, shows you whether the velocity is increasing or decreasing or constant with time. If the line slopes upwards in one section, as seen here, then it indicates that the velocity of the object is increasing. Similarly, if the line is sloping downwards for a portion of the graph, then during that period of time indicated by that portion, it's, the graph is indicating that v, the velocity, is decreasing. And if a portion of the graph is horizontal, then it indicates that v is constant. Something else to recall is that for these sections where the graph slopes either upwards or downwards, in other words, when v, which is the velocity of the object, is changing, the gradient of that section which is equal to the rate of change of your y-axis variable, delta y, divided by the rate, sorry, the rate of change of your y-axis variable, which is equal to change in v divided by change in t, is equal to the acceleration of the object. Because remember that acceleration is just the rate of change of velocity. Change in velocity divided by change in time. Another key point to note is that for a velocity versus time graph, the total area between the line of the graph and the x-axis allows you to estimate the displacement or the total displacement of the object. In other words, this shaded area between the purple line, which is the line of your graph, and the x-axis, the axis with time measured on it, allows you to estimate total displacement of your object. Now how you do this depends on how you've drawn the graph. If your graph is drawn on graph paper, you can use what's called the counting squares method, where you, where you, based on the scale of your graph, find out the value of each small square on your graph paper, then you count the number of total squares, and multiply the number of squares by the area of each square based on your scale. If you have not used graph paper, and you instead have a sketch of your graph, then you can use the direct calculation method, that's just my name for it, where you just calculate the area based on the information you're given and the geometric shape of your graph. I'm going to give you an example of the last method, because it's often easier to use, less time consuming than counting a bunch of squares and graph. 
And it's not in every instance where you will have graph paper. So this method is somewhat more general. All right, so I'm going to give you this example. You may want to pause the video and write it down and follow along as I work it out. Starting from zero, an object's velocity increases to 10 meters per second in five seconds, remains at this value for 10 seconds, then decreases to zero in two seconds. Draw the velocity versus time graph. Calculate A, the acceleration of the object for each step on the journey, and calculate the total displacement, S, of the object. Okay, so we'll start with part one, which is to draw the velocity versus time graph. And we're told that the object's velocity starts at zero, and after five seconds, the velocity increases to a value of 10 meters per second. All right, so we put the two values on the two axes, five seconds and 10 meters per second, and draw a straight line connecting them. Now, strictly speaking, the straight line indicates that the object is accelerating at a with a constant acceleration. This is not always the case, but this is typically the case for CSEC. So we draw the first section of the journey. I'm going to call this portion A. Then we're told that it remains at this value. The velocity remains at 10 meters per second for a further 10 seconds. 10 plus 5 is 15. So at 15 seconds, the velocity of 10 meters per second has been maintained. So it's been traveling at 10 meters per second for 10 seconds, and then its velocity decreases to zero in a further two seconds. So after 17 seconds, the object's velocity has come to zero. So the first part of the question is complete. We've drawn the velocity versus time graph. Now we calculate the acceleration for each step. For part A, acceleration A is equal to delta V over T, which is equal to 10 minus 0 divided by 5, which is equal to 2. And remember, units of velocity are meters per second. Units of time are seconds. When you divide meters per second by second, you get meters per second squared, which is the units for acceleration, which makes sense. For part B, A, still change in velocity divided by change in time, is equal to 10 velocity at this point. Sorry, velocity at this point minus 10 velocity at this point divided by 15 minus 5, or 10 seconds. All right. So the velocity does not change, so the acceleration is 0. For section C, acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T, which is 0 minus 10, because the change in velocity is usually calculated as the final velocity, which in this case is 0 meters per, meters per second, minus the initial velocity, which is 10 meters per second, divided by 2 seconds, which gives you a value of minus 5 meters per second squared. All right. The minus sign for this answer indicates that the object is decelerating. Its velocity is decreasing. The last part of the question asks us to estimate the total displacement of the object, which we said is equal to the area under the graph. Now, the first thing you do is to divide this graph into geometric shapes. And what that means is you, be, you look and see if the area under the graph can be represented 
by simple geometric shapes that fill the entire area, leaving no unaccounted for area. In other words, the first part of the journey, section A, can be represented by a triangle, the second part, section B, by a rectangle, the third part, section C, by another triangle. To calculate the area, you just use the formulas for the area of these simple geometric shapes and substitute the values which are on the y and x-axis. So the total area under the graph, which is equal to the total displacement, s total, can be calculated as follows. For section A, the area of a triangle is half base times height, or half 5 seconds, times 10 meters per second, plus the area for section B, where the area of a rectangle is equal to the length of one side, which we're going to say here is 10 seconds, times the width or height of the other side, which is 10 meters per second, plus section C, which is half 2 times 10. This gives you 25 meters, because seconds and per second cancel, plus 100 meters, seconds and per seconds cancel again, plus 10 meters, seconds and per seconds cancel again. So the total displacement is 135 meters. Right? So this has been a video on velocity versus time graphs. They're very simple. They're very effective. They allow you to visually see how the velocity of an object changes with time. Please feel free to watch over the video if there's anything you didn't understand. Leave us a comment in the comment section. All right? You can also like and share the video. And please remember to stay tuned for the next video in the series. Thanks for watching.